In this easy galaxy watercolor painting tutorial, I'm going to show you how to paint the northern lights with a Viking ship silhouette, and I'm going to give you some alternatives to make it even easier if you're just starting out, or to make it a bit more polished like mine if you're more used to painting with watercolors. I structured this tutorial so you have all the tools to paint other types of galaxies using my tips and techniques, so sit back, relax, and let's get started. Hi, this is Francoise. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Before we dive in, I want to thank my growing YouTube community as well as my Instagram tribe for helping me pick today's video. Thank you so much for your support and precious feedback. First things first, we want to look at the supplies I used to paint this watercolor galaxy sky. I recommend using a small sheet of paper you can cut out. Mine is 5x7 and I find it less overwhelming for a beginner. It's also great if you don't want to spend too long on your painting. I also recommend you to try 100% cotton watercolor paper like this one. It's a total game changer, especially for paintings like galaxies that require you to use a lot of water because that type of paper can handle the water really well, so you might want to consider that if you're not getting the results you want with your paintings. I like to use masking tape to make sure my sheet stays firmly in place while I paint, and it's also very cool to get some crisp edges all around the painting. I'm using a large round brush like this one for galaxies since there's little detail involved. I also wanted to try this new one I just got in my painting, but that's not something you need to use to achieve today's project. You really just need a large round brush for the galaxy and a smaller one with a fine tip for the silhouette. That is it. Today I'm using my Art Philosophy Beginner Confetti Set. It has all of the colors that you need to achieve many types of paintings. The links to all of the supplies I mentioned are in the description if you need them. Prepping your colors before you start painting is great since you won't have to worry about mixing them later. I suggest you use colors like yellow, orange, blue, and black for this project. Yellow and blue make green, that's how I'm getting this northern lights look. I could use green instead, but I went for yellow and orange simply because it will allow me to get more colors showing in my northern lights than just green and I find it more interesting. I'm using black with my blue to make a darker tone of blue. For a beginner, you can just use yellow and blue if you don't have a lot of colors, or just green and blue if you want to make it as simple as possible, but I think a bit of black added to your blue will give better contrast to the painting, so if you can get that, it's better, and black will still be useful to darken any of your colors for a future project. I'm making creamy mixes of those paints for now, but I will add water to them with a very wet brush as I'm picking those colors up later on. If you're a beginner, I suggest to get a ceramic plate out or your biggest mixing palette to give yourself plenty of room and to prepare very watery mixes of the colors you picked for this project. You can use those watery mixes for our first layer. Elsewhere, prepare another mix of the same colors, only this time add less water so it's more of a creamy consistency. You will use that thicker mix after we apply the first and very watery layer to make those colors deeper and brighter because watercolors fade when they dry, so it's important to make layers to keep adding paint with less and less water as you go. And I'm going to show you exactly how I do that right now. Now I'm ready to wet my paper and I use my big round brush as it helps me work faster than if I were to use a small one. I go back and forth, horizontally and vertically, to make sure I get every spot. I want the paper to be very wet, but I don't want so much water on it that you'd see a puddle somewhere. It's got to get soaked in the paper at some point. I start applying my lighter color, yellow, take green if you decided on green. Make sure to use a watery mix of your paint, this is the initial layer, we're just placing the colors where we want them for now. So we need to keep them light with lots of water, so that if we make a mistake, we can fix it later with darker layers. We are using the wet and wet technique here since the paper is wet and we're adding more water and paint on top of that. This will allow us to get our different colors to blend in nicely. This is a common technique for galaxies and skies in general. I'm switching back to my round brush because as I said before, I wanted to try out this new brush of mine for something, but it's not going to be useful with this wet and wet technique, so I'm just going to set it aside. 
I'm starting to apply my blue color now. I'm not afraid to add some on top of my yellow because not only will that help me vary the colors in this piece with a bit of yellow, blue, and green, since blue and yellow make green, but adding streaks of blue on top of the other color also helps making the whole thing look more appealing instead of having one large chunk of yellow in one place and blue everywhere else. It's adding a sense of balance to mix both here and there. I am darkening my blue with some black now to again vary color saturation while sticking to my color theme. Usually for galaxies, I'll keep the darkest tone of all for the areas around the northern lights to make sure these stay bright and catch the eye more, but that's just what I do and I don't think there are rules or anything. If you want to, you can place a few highlights or just lighten up colors here and there with a damp and clean paintbrush. It's called the lifting technique. It's one advantage of watercolor that when it's very wet like this, you can shape it in the way you like it more. Lift areas you find too dark or add paint to areas you find too light. It's starting to look good already. You can stop here and move on to the boat if you like. What I like to do is layer several times and repeat the process we just went through because I always find my skies and galaxies better with layering, but that's my personal preference. You will need to let this layer dry completely first and foremost before doing anything else. I'm using a heat gun to speed up the drying time, but you can wait it out or use a hairdryer on low. I wet everything again and I repeat the steps I just did. I apply yellow, blue, and dark blue. I chose to make my galaxy look the shape it is, but you can do it in a bunch of different ways. You could even just apply both colors randomly and let them flow and mix together without interfering as much as I am. I'm adding a third layer only because the result I got didn't satisfy me, but most of the time I'm good with two layers. And again, you can very well stop after one layer, even though I do think more layers will give you a deeper and more dramatic look. Something worth mentioning again is that the more layers I apply, the least water I use with my paints. I already have a base, so the purpose of a second or third layer for me is to enhance the colors more than anything else. And for that, I use less water and more paint. I'm wiping the edges of my masking tape with a soft tissue since I'm ready to paint the boat now and I don't want to stain my paper by accident with my wrists. When everything is completely dry, I trace the horizon line with a ruler and a pencil and I draw my boat. It's a little bit hard to see the pencil lines, so you can press harder because they will get covered up anyways with a much darker paint than the rest. You can also erase your marks a bit if you make a mistake, but I wouldn't press too hard with an eraser since it could lift a little bit of the watercolors underneath. Now I'm switching to my fine tip brush, it's the one I like to use for details. I'm going to mix a lot of black with a little bit of blue for my silhouette. I could go for just black, it's fine, but I like it better to include a bit of another color I already used in the painting to help that black look better less flat, since usually black makes things look very dull, especially with painting. Make sure that the mix you're preparing is as thick as possible. To know what's right, try and paint with it. If you can't trace a simple line without having to dip your brush into that mix again, it's too thick and you need to add water. If you can paint just fine, try adding a bit more paint to see how far you can go with the thickness of your mix. Doing this will ensure you're using the most opaque mix you could possibly have and your silhouette will pop more, plus you won't have to trace it again in case the paint was too light the first time around. I'm trying to be as precise as possible with my strokes and a fine tip brush really helps with that so if you like a little bit of detailing here and there, I'd recommend you to get one. If this boat seems too complicated, feel free painting a different one. Otherwise, you could try drawing it first on the blank page, mask it with masking fluid, and peel that masking fluid off later on after you're done with the galaxy. You can skip this next step if you like. For this step, I wanted to put more contrast and realism into this boat, so I decided to lift some of that thick mix I applied with a damp and clean brush. This is working great here as you can see because these art philosophy paints I'm using lift pretty easily and I'm using this to my advantage. The ones you're using may not lift as easily so don't worry if it doesn't work out or else test this on different paints if you like this technique. 
I keep lifting paint on large blocks to add some lights and interest to those areas. What you can do as well if you can't lift your paint is go straight in with a white gel pen or white gouache, why not? But I prefer the lifting technique because it looks less obvious than bright white accents. I still added a lot of gel pen here wherever I had lifted color to see what I could get with those two techniques. And I used it to enhance the areas I lifted and suggest different parts of the boat better. I had a hard time working with it though since it looks like I'm almost out of gel I guess, so, but normally it wouldn't be as tedious, I think I'll just have to get a new one. I'm keeping the best for last with the splatters to make the stars. For that I use white gouache. I mix enough water with it that when I dip my brush in the mix, I'm able to create those patterns easily if I flick the brush with the paper or if I rub the bristles with my finger. I'm careful not to put any paint on the boat or sea. I like to add a few bigger stars here and there with my brush. For this step, you can proceed as I am, or if you don't have gouache, but you have a white gel pen or a Posca pen, just use that, but try not to be too perfect with your dots. Try placing them randomly, otherwise it will show. We're done with this painting. I hope you found this step-by-step -step and my alternatives helpful, whatever your level is. Please let me know below in the comments so I can improve my videos even more. And if you like this, please like and share this on your social media. This always helps my channel. And for more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.